uh, to, for you to ask any questions about social media. She's the real expert. So we have a, up to about an hour, and the content will essentially be you guys coming to the mic, asking your question, and this lovely lady will answer. So without further ado, you don't want to hear from me. Please welcome Desiree. Thank you. Yeah, this is about you guys. I want to take some time to just allow you to answer any questions you have, whether it's the most simple or most complex, you can ask away. No pressure for who's first. <laughs> Kim, take it away. You know, I'm, like everyone else, I'm trying my best to work with my Instagram. But um, a lot of my followers are already FBOs, so for doing the business, how do I get more organic that's not uh, Forever Living uh, members, because most of you guys are, are following me, but that's not really good for me, for my business to recruit and develop and and I'm thinking uh, the algorithm if I post something how many will see it of your followers because it looks like as more followers you get as less percentage see your um, posts yeah. so I know you told about luck going live I just did earlier <laughs> and um, uh, but is it video is it real is it uh, just a normal photo uh, how is the algorithm because i think that's interesting to know and what time should i post on the day yeah of course okay i don't want to say the photo is dead because that's a little harsh but instagram in the past two years since they've started reels and real video so reels is really any video content so any video that you choose to post can be posted as a reel and what instagram is doing mainly because tiktok has taken such a big piece of the market is that they're really pushing for people to create video content on their platform so they're downgrading the amount of views and reach that you'll get from posts photos and they're amplifying and pushing out video much, much more. Uh, so Reels is definitely the number one content type that you want to continue to post. And less with video, it's actually less about the likes and more about the views. So if you go to the Reels section of your Instagram, you can see how many views that you've actually received. And that kind of tells you how well your content is performing. So you wanna look less at the amount of likes you're getting when it comes to a video and more about the views itself. That will show you how much it's being pushed out across social. So. I know sometimes video as a content type can be feel daunting to jump into, but really anything that you would post as a photo, you can post as a video. So just make it an actionable thing. Even if you're taking a photo of your favorite product, you can make a video and maybe be pouring it into a glass or just making one little actionable movement can easily allow it to become a video and it will help you grow exponentially as opposed to a single photo. Do you have a specific app that can help you make a video? Because I find it quite difficult. Yeah, so if you're taking a very simple video, you can do it within the Instagram app, but it is difficult if you're trying to get into video editing and cutting several clips together. I really like the app Splice, S-P-L-I-C-E. It's a really great video editing app and that will also allow you to then post it across multiple platforms. So you can make a real video in Splice, you can reshare it to TikTok, reshare it to Facebook. Facebook also has real videos as well. So that's a great way to use your content across multiple platforms. All of them are trying to push video more than photo now. So I would say Splice. Another one is, trying to think. What's the name of 
splice, S-P-L-I-C-E. And then another one is InShot, I-N-S-H-O-T. Both have free versions, but I think they're like one to three US dollars to purchase and you don't have to pay monthly or anything, but it's just a really easy and cost-efficient way to make your videos and add text element or anything you'd like to the video and cut the clips together. Hi. So in order to translate to the question, okay. Okay. Yeah. Please make sure you can come to the mic so the translators can hear the question as well. And feel free to come right up if you have a question. Yeah. Hi, I'm Christina from Hungary. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And my question is uh, how can we use LinkedIn for recruiting? That's a great idea. <laughs> I love that question. Because Link I'm uh, working as a recruiter. You're what? Recruiter, professional oh. recruiter, but why not um, hire candidates for yeah, LinkedIn? Definitely. LinkedIn in the past two years or so has really become more of a social app. So beforehand, it was a lot more just recruiters posting jobs, people looking up people that they might hire but now it's really become a social platform and has its own social feed with a similar look and feel to Facebook. So one really great way to grab attention on LinkedIn is to write short uh, articles, if you will, about your expertise. So not necessarily posting about the products you love, but definitely leaning in more to the business opportunity. And you wanna be sure to keep it compliant and and be a little bit careful with income claims and things like that but you can speak very openly about what you love about your business provide business building tips provide you know any sort of business related tips or things that others would find value in so with LinkedIn you want to aim for more of the business side and not necessarily post about the product but make sure that you're being mindful about how you're sharing the business. So things that other people could tap into uh, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, what you do as an entrepreneur, what's important to you as an entrepreneur, what challenges you've faced and overcome as an entrepreneur, all of those things will do very well on LinkedIn. Thank you. Yeah. Um. I would um, ask you, uh, what would you recommend? Because TikTok is now connected to Instagram, and when we post uh, videos on TikTok, it uh, automatically uh, suggests uh, to put in Instagram too. Is it better to just um, accept this option to post on Instagram or on Instagram to make reels by itself? Yeah, so because the two apps are not owned by each other, so one difference is Facebook and Instagram are owned by the same company right now known as Meta. So that company will love for you to post across both apps. However, when it comes to TikTok and Instagram, they are very much competitors. So you want to make sure that even if you will post the same content, you do not post it with each other. So that's where those third-party apps for video editing come in handy. Um, one trick that many people not, might not know is that when you download a video from TikTok, right, and you go to repost it, it has the watermark, like the little TikTok symbol. If you post that to Instagram, it flags it and will not push it out to a larger audience. So you want to make sure if you're posting on TikTok, it doesn't have the little Instagram logo and vice versa when you're posting on Instagram to not have the TikTok logo. You can still post the same kind of content and repurpose the, the video in both places, but you want to be mindful of looking like it's original video and not coming from another app. So. Another piece and difference between Instagram and TikTok is Instagram is still 
very aesthetic, right? People like to see the pretty, the pretty pictures, the pretty videos, um, have more of a look and feel to it. Whereas TikTok is very raw, real, relatable, just talking face to camera, making really short clips, talking about what you love. So being mindful of what's performing best on both platforms is much different. TikTok, you can be as weird and crazy and fun as you want. It doesn't have to be pretty. Whereas Instagram still loves the pretty, the pretty videos and a little bit more of an aesthetic, if that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, one more question. Um, uh, what would you suggest for uh, TikTok? Uh, it gives us uh, option to uh, be uh, business pay business profile or uh, individual because we are um, developing our brand. What is better for TikTok to be business or to be individual? Yeah, that's a great question. For both TikTok and Instagram, you want to make sure that you have a business account. So with TikTok and Instagram, with a business account or on Instagram, it can also be called a creator account. They have similar meanings, but business will allow you to tag products. A business account is also gonna allow you to have more insight into your analytics. So if you're a personal page right now, you might not be able to see how many people clicked the link in your profile or um, you know, how many views you got on something and you won't be able to dig into the, the data. And so we want to make sure that we're looking at the data, seeing what performs best and you'll also unlock features that are great for your business. One of them, not yet on TikTok, but definitely on Instagram, is to be able to actually tag the products from your own replicated site. So that's a huge benefit that you will not have with a personal page. So one thing to know is that when you do go to that business page, you will be viewed on that platform as a business. So you have to be extra careful about keeping it compliant and making sure that you don't say anything that you could be flagged for. But a business account on both apps is definitely the way to go. So you can have more visibility into that data and be able to use that data to your advantage as you continue to grow your audience. <coughs> Anyone else have another question? No? Don't be scared, come right up. Hi, I'm Miriam from Slovakia. Uh, I'm using uh, Facebook, but I would like to use more Instagram and I have an account, but it's not business one. Is it possible to swap it or do I have to create a new one? Yes, you can swap it. So if you go into the settings of your Instagram, um, it will say account type and tap into account type and you can just toggle right into a business account. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to make a new one, but if you're using that Instagram as a personal page and you want to start new as a business page, um, it doesn't hurt to start a new account because Instagram, because so many have been on for so many years, Instagram loves a new account and a new account that posts consistently. And you may actually see quicker growth with a new Instagram account if you are going to start dedicating it to your business. If you don't want to keep your personal and business separate and want it to be one place, you can also just go into settings and switch it over to a business account. Mm -hmm. So only on business one we can, for example, tap the product. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, of course. Oh, I can you try this if we have personal, can we switch it or we have to make it? Yes, you can switch it. Dear. You can switch it in the settings as well. So go to your TikTok settings and same thing, account type, and you should be able to toggle to a business account. <laughs> uh, so I want to ask as uh, somebody that speaks other language than English, should I have separate, I speak French. So do I have different uh, TikTok in French, another one in English, or run both languages, does it hurt? 
That's a good question. There's a couple things you can do there. If you're trying to tap into a new demographic or target audience that only speaks English, it could be in your benefit to make a new one and be speaking English verbally to the camera. However, if you want it to be dual language, what you could do is if you're speaking in French, you can use the captions feature and have the captions coming up in English. But if you want to really lean into an English speaking audience, it could benefit you to have an English one as well. And when you're making your videos, what I like to say is kind of batching content. So being able to create many videos in one day that then you can post throughout the month. So if you wanted to make the same video in both languages, you could just do that at the same time and then be posting them to two separate accounts. Okay, so another question is, uh, do I have to dance on, on, on TikTok? No! <laughs> <laughs> Before I, I realized like all my video, the one that I did some little dance, the, the one that I got uh, most view. The famous question of TikTok, no, you don't have to dance. If you like to dance, totally lean into the dancing. But I will say that maybe two years ago, 2020, when TikTok first became really big, that's all that TikTok really was, was finding a dance and doing your version of that dance. Now, it is not that at all. So many different brands are on there, sharing information, different personal brands doing all kinds of different things um, across every different type of industry so people are no longer necessarily looking for the dancing anymore so you don't have to dance thank you but you can <laughs> good uh, a things that I struggle a lot with is all these hashtags okay how important are hashtags because I see also a lot of posts without yeah. And how many should you put and uh, how big should the hashtag be? Yeah, good question. So hashtags rules are always kind of changing. Uh, as of right now, less is more. So three to ten hashtags can be a great way to find a post. And now more than ever, they are leaning into keywords. So keywords in your caption without a hashtag are actually just as important as a hashtag itself now. So for example, if you didn't hashtag collagen, but you spoke about collagen and its benefits in the caption, that will also now work very similar to how a hashtag would. On Instagram, um, people will have to search those hashtags for it to be pushed out to, you know, for them to view it. Whereas on TikTok, TikTok works in two different ways. One thing about TikTok and Instagram that's a little different is on TikTok, if you don't put any hashtags, it will push it out to a small group of all different types of people for the first three to five hours of your post. The more people that view that in the first three to five hours, will show TikTok how much more to push it out. If you choose to use hashtags on TikTok, it will automatically put, push your content out only to those who have showed interest in those hashtags. So it's really great on TikTok to be able to test that out in different ways. Try a couple posts without hashtags and try some with. Uh, you only need like five hashtags on TikTok. On Instagram, you can have up to 30, but I think three to 10 is plenty. And when you're looking at hashtags, want to make sure you're looking at your audience size versus the number of posts within that hashtag. For example, if I look up hashtag healthy living, there might be 10 million posts from that hashtag. But if I only have 5,000 followers, it will be really difficult for my post to get to the top of that hashtag. However, if you found something like healthy living moments that only has 500 or 5,000 uh, posts in that hashtag, that's actually going to help you. So don't use hashtags that are too much bigger than your audience size. You, and when you search hashtags in the search bar, 
it'll show you exactly how many posts have been used with that hashtag. So try to keep your hashtags five to 10 times the size of your audience. And that will help you become more visible within those hashtags. And hashtags are very, uh, they're chronological. Meaning if you went back to a post from two weeks ago and added a hashtag, it will not benefit you because there's been two more weeks of posts that had a hashtag. So you have to add them at the time of your post for them to be relevant. Hello. Hi. Um, what exactly are the daily to-dos on Instagram to become successful? What are the what, I'm sorry? What are the what to do? The daily to-dos. The daily to-dos. To-dos. Oh, of course. Um, daily to-dos would be to utilize stories to share and document your daily life. Stories only last for 24 hours, so even if you don't make a daily post, maybe you do an in-feed like a reel or a photo um, three to five times a week, you should still be daily on your stories. Stories, you can be a little more, you can show your personality, you can talk face to camera, it doesn't live on forever, so there's a little less pressure there and you can really just talk about what you're doing in your daily life. So stories are a really great way as a daily to do. Another one is engagement. So the more that you engage with like-minded audiences, whether it be each other or other people that are not necessarily promoting the same products, but are living a healthy lifestyle or people that you think could be interested in your product, it's very important to engage with them. So I like to call it the smart scroll rather than like the doom scroll or the mindless scroll. So instead of just scrolling your feed and liking things here and there, be very mindful and strategic and use it as a business tool. So maybe take five to 15 minutes every day to search those same hashtags that you're interested in and engage with people who are posting about those things. That way, they are more likely to see your comment, comment back, and then go to your page. So the more that you outward engage with other people, the more it's gonna benefit your page because it'll be easier for them to find you and they'll get a notification that you commented and make sure you provide a genuine comment so it allows them to talk back to you, start a conversation and visit your page and potentially follow you as well. And also you, another daily to do could be to follow other people. So no longer do we want to follow people just to see if they follow back and unfollow, but be very strategic as to who you follow. If you find someone else's information that you enjoy, follow them and start actively commenting on their content and more often than not, in return, they will come back and follow you as well. Hi, this Hi. is Justina from The Real yes. <laughs> Running Girl. Hi. I nice have to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Uh, to, um, I have a question about the music. Um, is it the same as with uh, hashtags? So we should uh, use the music like um, which have the most more views or not? <laughs> yes. So different on. Great question about the music. So um, different on Instagram and on TikTok. On Instagram it's really good to find an audio that is just starting to pick up. For example, maybe it has 7,000 to 10,000 videos on that sound because that means that it's starting to trend, right? It's kind of like here in the scale rather than already hit its peak and kind of people are stopping to use it. So you wanna find, and you can see how many people have used it as well. Um, and you can save them for later, save the audio for later. And that will allow you to really see um, more growth because another thing about video content is you might not get many views for the first, even one week, but do not delete it and don't think that it might not pick up later because as that sound continues to trend, 
more and more people will see your video because they're looking at that sound. On TikTok, it is really good to be using what's called a viral sound, so one that's really at its peak. And it's really easy to find those if you go into the music library there, they have a viral chart and anything on that chart is what people are using the most. So that's a really great way to find viral music or audio on TikTok. What about, what about if you d delete the um, reel or uh, post? Uh, um, sorry, I don't speak English no. very well. No, you're doing um, great. Like, uh, one time I deleted the reel and my followers was much more, more less after this. So it's, the, it's like Instagram doesn't like this, like when you delete the post. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if they don't like it, but it kind of shows that you're lessening the number of posts you have. Um, and so it's good to let it live, even if, especially if it's not doing well right at first. Sometimes I've had videos that I think, oh, that was a terrible video, no one watched it. And then two weeks later, it gets 100,000 views. So you never know, especially with video, when it's gonna take off. So post what you love, post what you're passionate about, and just let it live on. Um, a great way, if, if for example, for some reason, you don't and want it on your feed anymore, instead of deleting it, you can what's called archive it. So if you go to the three dots at the top of the post, instead of delete, you'll have an archive option and that won't be deleting it, it'll just be taking it off your page. And at any time you can unarchive it and bring it back to your page. So I recommend archiving as opposed to deleting if for some reason you don't want it on your feed. But don't think just because it didn't go anywhere in the first couple of minutes that it might not, you know, it could take off much later. So. The video content all across all platforms is living a lot longer than a photo would, which is great for your business. Hello, Hi. my name is Boda from Kazakhstan. Uh, I am a blogger in our country. I Reporter? have a blogger. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, I have a. Uh, 30,000 followers. That's amazing. And uh, I have two page, uh, one uh, page about our products and uh, our page of my life and my blog, uh, which is better on put my uh, target, target in Facebook uh, or uh, about uh, our products or about of my blog. So which one should you link to your Facebook? Yes. Okay, yeah. Um, it depends on who you're trying to target on Facebook. Um, a great way to kind of do both is whatever your audience on Facebook that you're trying to reach, if it's more to share the products, you should link your other accounts that are your product accounts, but you can also use both accounts to your advantage, what I call like cross-pollination or cross-promoting of both accounts. So maybe you posted a lifestyle video on your blog account, but you can post it also to your product page and tell tell your followers there yes. about the other page yes. and more often than not you'll see people want to follow both accounts which is a great way to yes. get followers from one to the other and yes, back and yes. forth. Uh, I usually, <laughs> That's one. Uh, which is better used um, our about uh, products or uh, my blog which is better used are used for different things. So I think it's good to use both, but just to be mindful of who the audience is um, and whoever you are trying to reach, lean into that one. Um, but I think both are used for different things, right? So I think it's good to share a little bit of both. But if you can only link one, think about who you wanna reach. Do you want to reach the customer 
do you want to reach new customers through your blog or do you want to try to is your audience on your product page mostly customers already mm -hmm. are they customers on your page now customers page uh... your product page my product page um, no, I, our uh, only uh, my blog. Okay. Uh, customers for customers. Yeah. Yes. I think today people are more interested to see the products in your blog. So your lifestyle blog may be starting to uh, incorporate more products, use more products on the blog side will show another part of your business. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> Thank You're welcome. You. Hello. My question is, I have a lot, of, a lot of men who follow me every day. And when I go to the profile, they are not uh, the doctors and also... Now I block them. Or oh, what should I do with them? If you don't want them on your page, you can totally block them. If they're not benefiting your page, and if they are not benefiting your page, and you don't want them to see your content, you can block them. I get that too. Thank you. You're welcome. So I uh, want to ask about FLP360. I know usually when you share links on Facebook, they don't show it to many people. So how do you recommend using the social posts on FLP360 to Facebook or other social media platforms? Yeah, so Facebook and Instagram stories are a really good way to share links. Um, a Facebook post can also be a good way. You will notice on Instagram, if you put it in the caption, it won't be a clickable link. So it won't really help you because we don't think many people are copy pasting the link. But stories, someone can just tap and go directly to the link. So stories are a really strong way to share the links. I speak French. I think she's getting a translation. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, she will help me with. Uh, Hi. Okay. Hi. Hi. Monica. <laughs> nice, nice to meet you. you. <laughs> so, the question that we have is we just need some clarity on supporting each other. You mentioned something in the training that we should support each other, like with hearts, you know. We just want to know if it's different on Facebook and Instagram. But my question, is it really working as a favor for us, supporting each other? Or is it going to um, support the amount, is it going to increase the amount of followers? Or is this, you know, in our favor to support each other? Like, are we going to get new viewers or just people who are supporting, right? She wanted to know if the Facebook post will be visible to other people or to those people who are supporting her, you know, with um, hearts and yeah. all different emojis. Yeah. I don't know if you understand my question. No, no, good question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's loud. <laughs> the second part of the question with Facebook, um, if you use hashtags and you have to make sure that your uh, posts are public so your account is public not private so when you go to post it will say um, everyone or only friends so make sure it's everyone um, in order for that post to be seen by more people it needs to have hashtags 
Uh, hashtags aren't used as much on Facebook, but um, it will also allow for like suggested posts. So you'll see a lot of suggested posts on your feed and those are coming from hashtags or interests that you viewed. So if someone has health and wellness as an interest and you hashtag health and wellness, it will it could show up on their page as a suggested post uh, a good way to also utilize that is to make a business page on Facebook so have your own business page that people can like and follow rather than add as a friend so you can make a business page that's linked to your personal account um, but for supporting each other what it helps with is uh, if you all have notifications on for each other, especially on Instagram, and you see that she just posted and five other people saw, and you're all supporting each other's posts, if you all like and comment on that post within the first 30 minutes to an hour that you went live with your post, it shows the algorithm on Instagram and every platform that people are really liking that post. People engaged with it very quickly and that shows the app to push it to more people. So by supporting each other and commenting on each other's posts, you will increase your reach, which will allow for new people to see you. So yes, it will help with gaining new audience because the more engagement you get on your post within the first hour of your post, the wider it will be pushed out to new people that have never seen your account before. Is it, is it the same you know, with the Facebook? Does, does it work? Facebook is a little different because it's, it's more like with your friends, it's more with your followers already, um, but it will work the same way if you put hashtags. But you need hashtags for it to go to more people. Otherwise, only people in your feed will see it. Your friends. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. We might come back with more questions. <laughs> yeah. Please do. She, she had the question about what we talked about earlier. Um, she was asking how to engage uh, the people she has, the followers. Uh, and I told her that you said earlier that you should um, make polls and ask them what they want to hear about. Yes, definitely. So when you want to engage with your followers that you already have, you want to ask them questions and uh, give them prompts to communicate with you. Something that is really popular on Instagram right now is there's a little uh, question box and you can say, ask me anything. And so that is prompting someone when they come across your page, oh, she said, ask me anything. Maybe they had a question for you, but you never told them, ask me anything. So when you do give them and open that door to ask you something, uh, they'll be more likely to enter something into that box and uh, allow you to respond. And the good thing about a question box is when you want to say an answer, you can post the question back into the story and then share it with all of your followers. So not only are you answering the question for the one person that asked it, but you're letting all your followers know that you're engaging and you're responsive to anyone that asks a question and giving them information too. She's asking about WhatsApp. Uh, if there are people that do not uh, react to what she's posting on WhatsApp, is it better to get them out or to keep them? WhatsApp is a little different because 
WhatsApp is more of a texting platform. So I would use that more as just a form of texting or communication. So if you're talking to someone on Instagram or Facebook and you want to make it more intimate or conversational, you can then provide your number to WhatsApp, but WhatsApp is not used oh, in the US, not as much as a social sharing, more as um, just one-on-one -on -one conversation, but it is a good way, um, again, with like the people that you don't want to follow you, if you don't want them to follow you, block them. Hi, I'm Robert. Uh, my question is, can you tell me something about the reach statistics, business and private in Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, using hashtag, don't using hashtag. So what are the statistics? Yeah. Thanks. So if you have on a private account, nobody that is not your follower that you've accepted can see your information. So if your account is private, it will never be seen outside of your followers. So your reach is limited to only your followers. If you are, you have a public account, that is where you will allow for reach for people that are not your followers. So that's where the hashtags and the keywords really play a big part in allowing for more reach. So the more views that you get will account for more potential people to follow you, but your account has to be public and it doesn't have to be a business account, but you can only see your analytics and your data if you have a business or creator account on Instagram. So it's uh, very of your very good interest to have a public account um, and if you have an account that you just share maybe with friends and family and you want it to be more intimate and private then I would suggest having a private account just for friends and family and a public account uh, you know for potential new customers. I will ask a question. Um, since um, Facebook is very popular in my country, and uh, a lot of people work on uh, on Facebook, uh, I, I used Facebook for five years. I had a page, and I had uh, over eleven thousand followers. But um, at one day, Facebook deleted my page. I make a new one. I, I made 1,500 followers, it deleted my page, I make a new one. I reached 500 uh, followers, it deleted my page, and now <laughs> I realize it's a waste of time. I focused on uh, TikTok, on Instagram, even uh, on uh, website, on uh, YouTube. Do you think it's a good way or to go back to Facebook and um, approach another way or just to leave a Facebook as it is and focus on other platforms? I think if you already reached a lot of people on Facebook, Facebook is the most strict about not compliant posts. So if they see something that they don't like, they will be very quick to shut down your account. So you have to be very, very, very careful with what you say and how you say it on Facebook. Uh, so they will be the quickest to shut down your page. Uh, you have to be careful across all platforms, but Facebook is the number one to be known to. Too much effort, time and everything yes. to put in and then just to, you know, it's <laughs> quite uh, devastating. So, yeah. um, I don't know, uh, should I put again and again uh, that much effort or just focus on other 
I think uh, with new platforms like TikTok, it's of your interest to start on a new platform and reach new people. Uh, it's Facebook will be the most difficult, and but you can take some of that content that you've used uh, on those pages to gain a following on you know on the other pages. Just be careful of compliance. Um, no, now uh, when it's Meta, it completely changed. It's really strict. It's uh, uh, now you spend so much time. Is it correct for Facebook or it's not? It's yeah. You know. And. Um, one thing I will say is, to her point, you can spend a lot of time, but at the end of the day, it's not a, it's not a place that you own, right? So they can do whatever they want because they own it. Even if it's your page, they own it. So something that I always suggest for people that are growing a business is to find a way to entice your followers to give them your email, their email address. If you can have an email list, that's something that you own, or a website that you own, like a blog, that is something that cannot be shut down by somebody else. So it's always in your best interest when you have dedicated followers. Maybe you have something what you call a freebie, something you will give them for free in return for their email address because something like an email list is something that nobody can take away from you and so if you had the emails of all of your 11,000 followers on that Facebook page when they shut it down you could still have a way to contact them and provide them somewhere else to follow you so I always recommend having something that you own like an email list to keep your customers close and not lose them like that because it's, Facebook doesn't like you for some reason. <laughs> Can you come up here? Sorry, they're trying to translate, so yeah. Just, uh, for Instagram and TikTok, are they also um, easy to uh, stop you, like just uh, you don't exist or they are different? Um, they can also shut down your account for anything they want. Um, I would just be very careful on how you speak. The biggest things that all platforms, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, are flagging are things like, I got a free trip, I earned a free car, I, I make a million dollars a year. Those things are what's flagging like the things that we're not supposed to say are being flagged. So as opposed to talking about a product you love and saying the benefits that are approved to be said, they cannot shut you down for that. But if you make an income claim or an incentive claim or something that you got for free or uh, something that sounds uh, not normal, that's something that's really going to flag you. So just being careful of, of how you speak to your business um, is the easiest way to not be <laughs> shut down. <laughs> because they have, um, the way it works is they have trigger words. So if you use a certain word in your post, it will flag it to Instagram and that will shut it down and it's things like free trip or made a lot of money or uh, got a big check those type of words are being flagged so just being careful and keeping it compliant is the best way to not get your account shut down uh, hi my name is madina i'm from kazakhstan i've already worked in instagram and tiktok my question is about youtube uh, how often I should uh, put videos and um, um, time? Uh, one expert says that uh, it's much better to post four or three minutes or on YouTube I can post a 10-15 minutes video, which is better? Yes, so uh, 
short form content is what is trending the most. Uh, a good way to think about how long your video should be is finding a trending song or an audio. So if you're scrolling and you keep hearing a song over and over and maybe it's 15 seconds, that is a good thing to play off of. Use that sound and make your video for 15 seconds. Uh, YouTube is known for long form content. So when people are going to YouTube, you know that they are looking for a longer video, more detail. Um, people's attention span, they say, is seven seconds. So seven seconds, whatever you can do in seven seconds is in a video, you're most likely to know that someone will watch it all the way through. Uh, after maybe 15 seconds, they're more likely to scroll past. Uh, when you are making longer videos, maybe 30 seconds to one minute on TikTok and on Instagram, what you can do is have what's called a hook. So maybe you say, here's the number one thing that I love about, or the top five things that I love about this product. And you count down instead of saying the best one first, you say the best one last because everyone wants to know what the number one thing is. So think about ways of how your attention is held when you're watching a video. If you're counting down from five, people are more likely to stick around and think about wanting to know what number one is. So using tactics like that, when you do have longer videos, is a great way to try to hold people's attention. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Your pickup is ready for the next bit of your vacation. I don't know whether you want to, you want to take one more? Okay. Yeah, she's heading out on vacation. You do? <laughs> and she has to go off in a couple of minutes. So one more question. Yeah, up to you. Go ahead, yeah. Hello, my name is Mona Salayam. I am a senior manager in the United States. Uh, my question, how I can target more followers the same area I live, like I live in the United States. So how I can bring more people follow me uh, for business and, you know, for sell my product in the same United States? That's a great question. I would say number one is to use uh, geotags or location tags. So uh, you can do the same in hashtags. So maybe you are at a local coffee shop in your town and you also have your favorite product with you. You can tag that location and other people will be looking at that location and will be more likely to see you in that location and know that you're local to that area. Another way to do so is to utilize hashtags that are locations. For example, if you live in Scottsdale, using the hashtag Scottsdale will allow more people within that area to find you. Okay, that's great. Thank yeah. you so much for it. Thank you. One more, please. Okay, one more, one more. Hi, my name is Hedwig. I'm senior manager and I have the same problem. I've got blocked in Facebook. So I have the private account is blocked, but I have two business accounts on Facebook. So I cannot work on them anymore. I have one account on Instagram. So the one account on Instagram is connected with one business on Facebook. This is okay. Yeah. But I have a second business. So how can I connect the old business account with a new uh, Instagram? Yeah. Uh, so if you have a business page on Facebook, you can connect multiple pages. So but, but it's, yeah, I have to, to for, the, for the new Instagram account, I need a new email. Is that right? Mm. Yeah. But the old, e the other email is on the Facebook. So can I connect also with a different email? Yes. Is you it can, possible? Yes. Okay. You can connect with a different email. Uh, just make a new email address so you can make the new account you need to make. Yeah. But then you can just use the link, the handle of the account. You can log into any Instagram account through Facebook and connect them, even if it's different emails. Okay. So, and, and Instagram also has uh, business accounts? Yes. 
Okay, yes. thank you very much. Of course. I'm Leila from Bosnia. I have to say thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> you are very expert and we are very happy to hear all of information. And I have one suggestion, if it's possible, and if you are right address for my question, for uh, forever, um, <laughs> for all of us, for all of us, FBO, member, yes, yeah, FBO. Yeah. <laughs> um, is it possible to make some education for social media? <laughs> yeah. Can you suggest somewhere or someone? <laughs> Are you spending all my budget already? <laughs> it's a great suggestion and it's a great point to thank her. I think she's been amazing, right? Ladies and gentlemen, Desiree Marchetti. Thank you so much, everyone.